Hello, welcome to the webinar. My name is Steve Bizanov from Media Services, a cast and crew company. Um, I'm here with my associate, Anthony Lopez. Hello, and, everyone. And we are going to go through a webinar, how to pay film and TV crews when filming in the US. Um, we've had many um, UK and EU companies coming to the US these days. And it's it's a learning process. Uh, paying crews is very different compared to what you used to in your home countries. Uh, so we found trying to educate everybody makes it a lot easier, um, and we get a lot of questions. So what we're going to do today is go through the process. Um, you have the ability to ask questions. Um, you can just key it in and uh, Anthony and myself will get those questions. We will try to get through as many questions as possible uh, as in the time that we have allotted. Uh, if we don't get to your questions, um, we will we have your email addresses so we will respond to them directly. So feel free to key as many questions as you want either relevant to uh, what we're covering, or if you're already a client of ours, you might have uh, specific questions to things that you've ran into, so you're more than welcome to send those questions through. Okay, so we will proceed. So, and Anthony and myself, both of us have been doing payroll for quite a long time, so we have a lot of experience. Let's go back. What is required uh, when working with payroll service? A certificate of insurance, which um, specifications can vary, and what that means, and we can provide samples of that, uh, but we provide, uh, we require that we are a uh, additional insured on general liability. And in the UK, I know that's employer's uh, liability, um, and one of the things that people need to be aware of coming from the UK is that uh, one of the requirements on the auto on the general liability uh, certificate is automobile liability. Now that the UK companies have problems providing that, that's not something they can provide. Uh, though we do work with some UK companies that have. Uh, U.S. affiliations, so they can get it through, like MIB is uh, a popular one. Uh, but if not, a lot of people will just come to the U.S. when shooting and get insurance here, so it's no problem. Um, if you're a scripted project, uh, we require a script uh, so we know what's going on, and we will provide a uh, service agreement to be signed. Some companies uh, that you'll run into will also require advanced deposits and cash flows. Usually we do not, so just be aware of that. Um, so I mentioned the certificate of insurance for the, and the auto liability, and these are two of the companies that usually can, from the UK, that can provide the auto liability. So if you're looking at uh, insurance companies in the UK. These are two. So you can ask your insurance carriers um, if they can provide auto liability for you. Otherwise, we can just give you referrals in the US where you can get that from. All right. So entertainment payroll companies' responsibilities. Um, pay the employees, all right, and deduct and withhold taxes pay federal and state unemployment taxes. Um, you probably won't run into the child support and garnishments, but if you're doing longer projects, you might see that. If you're dealing with uh, unions, we can help you handle the union and guild contributions. Um, we'll see more co people coming from here dealing with SAG, with Screen Actors Guild, but if you're dealing with crew unions, we can help you on that as well. Um, we keep all the payroll records. We do all the reporting uh, for quarterly taxes and W-2s, and we track liability for 
uh, Affordable Care Act and sick leave hours, which are di just different requirements that you'll run into different states. And one of the things you'll, in dealing in the US, if you're working in different states, it could drive you crazy, but there are re different requirements in different states. So you always need to be aware of what state and what requirements there are. And, and we can help you with that. I'll be honest, to go through all 50 states here would drive you all nuts. So if you ever have questions on a specific state, just let us know, okay? Okay, Anthony. All right, independent contractors. So we're gonna start with independent contractors because it's a major thing that we uh, have to educate uh, clients and prospective clients on when they're coming in to film in the US. So independent contractors are, are standalone businesses that provide their services and typically get paid via invoice. They have their own business. They work for multiple employers. They have their own insurance. Now in our industry for many, many years, people would pay their crew members and even talents as independent contractors. But you know, by definition, an independent contractor, there's many spe specifics that need to be adhered to as far as the federal government is concerned. So we're going to just go through a quick thing of like, what's the difference between a W-2 employee and an actual independent contractor? All right, so payroll companies do not pay independent contractors, only employees and valid corporations. Why? Because technically they're a standalone company. If they're a true to life independent contractor, then they provide a invoice and they get paid through production to accounts payable. An employee, you know, um, is someone that you hire for a project. There are specifics on where they're going to be, what they're going to be paid, who they report to. An independent contractor do not work in those uh, parameters. You know, think of an independent contractor more of like a plumber. You don't tell the plumber, you got to be here Tuesday and I'm going to pay you $750 for this job. He tells you when he's available and how much he's going to invoice you for the project. All right. And just to make clear, uh, Independent contractors are not the same as loan out corps. We can pay loan out corporations. So yes, those are people. Who, yeah, and we're going to talk about loan outs a little later in this uh, webinar. But yes, there's a big difference, and we'll tell you exactly what that is. Okay, great. All right, so this is more about the independent contractors. The right to work. So the right to control the worker is really what it's all about. If you can tell them where to be and what to do, then you are in control of them. They are not an independent contractor. Next slide. All right, so this is the common law parameters. So this here, like workers' compensation is a big part of it. An independent contractor is a business and typically they have their own business insurance, which includes workers' compensation. This is a big thing because if somebody is going to be on your team and on your work sites and they are an, an independent contractor, if you're paying them through invoice and they want to be paid X amounts, make sure that they have workers' compensation. Make sure because in the end of the day, it's going to end up being your responsibility should anything happen to them. Realization of profit and loss. Again, they provide an invoice, you know, for their for their for their services. If they didn't do a great job and you don't want to pay it or they're overcharging you, you can simply refuse to pay it. That's not the case with an employee. An employee, there we have labor laws in place to make sure that they get paid exactly as was contracted for. So that's the big difference there. Instruction to workers, if you're, you know, that's the, often not the case. You don't provide instructions or any type of education to, to show them what to do, as well as job training. Definitely doesn't apply to independent contractors. Okay, yes, yeah, the fair. So this is um, this is a law that was started in 1938. Um, the main highlights of this law was to protect employees. So they put into place a right to a minimum wage as well as detailing overtime hours. So in for the federal level, you get time and a half after working 40 hours in a single work week, typically a Sunday to Saturday schedule. And minimum wage, they have a minimum wage that works on the federal level, but there's also local levels as well, which we'll talk about soon as well. Wait. So minimum wage here, federal on the federal level, it's $7.25 per hour. This started in 2019 and it's still going on. So after 40 hours within a seven-day period, that uh, that 7.25 pumps up about half a percent, 
So this works out on the federal level. And we're going to talk about next California. So California doesn't work on that level. They actually have multiple different uh, minimum wage laws into effect. As you can see there, depending on where you're filming in Los Angeles and in certain areas, you know, you'll have a certain percentage. So this is something when you're budgeting, you definitely need to, uh, um, you know, get information on it and make sure you get it right or else you're going to under budget and you're going to put yourself over. You don't want that. So here are some of the counties in California of which they apply. Um, and there is a site where you can actually see all the current minimum wages. I think we have that on the next slide. All right, so there on the bottom there, you'll see the Department of Labor website. And on that there, they have the entire, all the US states. You can click on the state and see what the state wages, minimum wages, as well as any locals. Um, New York also has a minimum wage law of $15 per hour. Um, their outer counties of uh, Long Island and Westchester have 14. And this is going on all over the states right now. Um, the federal level definitely works still in the majority of locations. But, you know, especially more populous production areas are, are definitely getting more up to date with the minimum wage, you know, to meet, uh, you know, living standards. So when you're budgeting your project, you definitely want to see if your local hires, what they what you need to pay them so that you can be sure in the compliance. Yeah, and just be aware, a lot of people still budget uh, flat. And, and obviously, for budgeting, that's fine. But when you're paying payroll, and, less, and we'll talk about the town, you have to break down um, the pay via hours. So if rights of exempt employees. Exempt employees have virtually no rights at all under the federal uh, not entitled to overtime. Um, the mythical producer, and that's the big joke, a lot of people will try to submit time cards and say everybody's a producer. It's not a title-based law, it's a function-based law. So if they're not managing people, even if you call them a producer, you, it, you're not abiding by the law. So you just want to be, be aware of that. And this is the list we have, and we'd be glad to provide this to anybody who needs it. But just be aware, this, a lot of these categories, if you're doing a small documentary or, or a reality, where we'll have a lot of people come over to the US and just hire a couple of people, you're really not going to have the, these many categories. But the, these are more relevant on larger projects. All right, Anthony. Yes, all right. So yes. no guarantees in the wage and hour law. So again, I was talking before about the Federal Labor Standards Act, um, where they talked about minimum wage and overtime. So yeah, so oftentimes people will budget, and it's common in our industry, flats. You know, $650 for a sound engineer for 10 hours, you know, grip gaffer for uh, $500 for a 12 hour day, things of that sort. And that makes sense on a budgeting level, but to remain in compliance with labor laws, they don't accept that unless you're an exempt employee, like, like uh, Steve just mentioned. So, you know, production assistants, uh, makeup artists, assistants, folks who are not in a supervisory position that they report to a department head or so, these are hourly employees. So whether or not you hired them for, you know, X amount of dollars for X amount of hours, you need to break that down on a time card because it's not acceptable by the Department of Labor and we cannot process it as such. So you definitely need to record the hours that they came in and out, especially for workers' comp purposes, and just to make sure that we are in compliance with labor law should there ever be an audit somewhere down the road. Next slide. All right, overtime. We spoke about this again before. So yes, um, in most of the states, it's uh, time and a half after 40 hours in a single seven day period. In California, OT starts after the eighth hour in a single day. So if you're gonna be filming anywhere in California, you have to understand that uh, those numbers go into place. So if you do have a 10 to 12 hour shoot or beyond, you'll get straight time for the first eight, then you go into time and a half after that, and even golden time, I believe, after the 12th hour, which is double time. Next slide. Workers' compensation. So 
workers' compensation is really, really important. It's actually, you know, a good uh, reason why a lot of productions use a payroll company. As the payroll company acts as the employer of record, for tax and, for tax and insurances rely are our responsibility. So we provide the workers' comp insurance for the personnel that we are paying. Uh, workers' comp doesn't work like general liability and auto liability where you can kind of purchase it, you know, on annual or short term. You know, they, they need specifics about exactly who's going to be working and what's going to be done. So, you know, oftentimes productions will use payroll companies like ours and cast and crew and caps and to make sure that they have the workers' comp in place. Workers' comp is insurance to protect the employees should anything happen. Um, production, you know, we have a lot of moving parts. We're out there, you know, it's and that's a lot of maybe people sitting in the office or so. We have, you know, stunts going on. We are moving all over from location to location, a lot of heavy equipment. So you want to make sure that you have protection in place. So we will provide that protection. We issue a certificate of insurance listing our, our clients as additional insured and we cover all types of work and especially risky work, pyrotechnics, stunt works, weaponry, water activity, non-domestic animals. These are all hazardous activities that often take place on production. So you want to make sure that workers' comp insurance is in place we provide that and you have to by law. Slide. All right. All right. So what is a fringe? So when you're budgeting and using payroll, uh, you'll hear us use the term fringe benefit. Uh, so obviously you're budgeting wages, but you also need, you're going to end up paying on top of the wages. If you're dealing with union fringes, with with unions, you're going to be paying union fringes, and that's pension, health, and welfare contributions. All right. Um, like for example, Screen Actors Guild is, is about 21% on top of the wages, so you have to budget for that. And then for non-union fringes, um, you have payroll taxes, workers' comp, and handling fee. Okay. So this is all part of the additional costs when you need to pay your crews in the US. All right, and, and we work with all the different unions, whether it's in the US, um, and we have Screen Actors Guild, Directors Guild, IA, which is crews, and Teamsters, which are drivers, and they have different jurisdictions. Um, some could be re regional, some can be national, and also we deal with international companies who are hiring uh u.s unions when they're working outside of the country so you might have screen actors guild um talent working for you in the uk a and we can actually uh if they're u.s citizens we can help you and we also have uh our sister company sergeant disc uh in the uk who can help as well if you have a project going on in the uk or the republic of ireland Union obligations. You, you must have a contract signed um, and and follow the rules. And we'll help you calculate all the contributions on top of that uh, and give you guidance on the rules if you, if you need assistance. Now, a signator is um, usually the producer signing an agreement with the unions. Okay, so if you, you're working with Screen Actors Guild, you must have a, a, an agreement. Uh, if you don't have an agreement, there are options to borrow or rent signatures. All right. And they're, they're third party signatures who can act as a signature in the union situation. And we can uh, assist you with that. Okay. Anthony? So who can be paid? All right, so media services, cast and crew, we can pay US citizens, whether working domestically or as well as abroad. We can also pay Canadian citizens working you know, in Canada, US, as well as the rest of the world. If somebody is coming in to work in the United States and they are not a citizen, then we can pay them as long as they have the proper work authorizations, whether it be a resident alien or a non-resident alien. As long as they have the work permissions to work in the United States, we can pay them. 
but I'll talk about kit rentals until the slide loads. So kit rentals are something that you, you know, often have to deal with with regards to crew. Um, it could be a production accountant who has a laptop. It could be your makeup artist with their makeup kit. It can be your camera operator bringing in their camera gear or their lenses, lighting kits and such. So we can pay for those products as well, for those additional things. They, they, we do need a kit rental form that outlines all the items that are being that they're being paid for and the amounts for them. So the reason we're doing this is because you don't want the taxes on that. Gross wages must be taxed. But if it is a kit rental, if it's equipment that is being used for production and you are paying that to the employee, you know, for those for those products of theirs, as long as it's on the kit rental, you know, we can pay it and it won't be taxed. It'll, it'll they'll be paid for it through their checks with their gross wages, but it will not be taxed. But also be reasonable, you know. You can't have, you know, uh, a camera operator getting paid, you know, seven hundred fifty dollars in gross wages, but then they're gonna have, right. you know, a, a red camera there for ten thousand dollars. You know, it's gonna put a red flag by the IRS, and they're gonna say what's happening here. I'm still on. We still see the who can be paid slide, but I know the next one is about per diems, and I'll talk about per diems. So per diems are when you're going to be paying an employee an additional uh, amount of money, not necessarily associated with the work. It could be for food, it could be for just general living expenses while they're on your production. Typically, this happens with uh, longer form projects, you know, multiple week projects like a feature film or television or so. So with the per diems, you can pay X amount of dollars that would be non-taxable. But that amount, the actual total of per diem that is non-taxable varies from location to location, from state to state. So in the US, they have the CONUS table. And the CONUS table can be found online and you can see all the counties and locations and what exactly the um, non-taxable amount is. If you go over that, if it's say $60 per day, but you agree to pay $85 a day to an employee, the 60 will be non-tax but the 25 extra will be taxed. Oh, there we go, cool, CONUS table, you see that there? Click on that link or just type that into your browser and you'll get the CONUS table and you can see definitely something that you want to be budgeting for. Let's see, next slide. Should be mileage. Yep. All right, so with mileage, you know, that's, this is also something that might come into play with your production, doesn't necessarily apply to every production, but if somebody, if a crew member or local hire is traveling, you know, excessively to get to the work location and back, they may want to be reimbursed for their mileage, and that can be done, as long as they provide a mileage record, as you can see right here. This is a form that we have, fillable PDF. This is our company. Every company has one. You know, you have to put the dates, the, you know, destination, the mileage, obviously everything that's there. Um, the amount that they are reimbursed per mile is dictated by the IRS, and in 2023, it is currently 65 cents. Next slide should be loan outs, which we had talked about before. So, loan outs. So, loan outs are typically are, are often in place with above the line talent, producers, directors. These are persons that set up a company in order to loan out their services. So a C Corp, S Corp, or a limited liability company are often the types of corporations that they establish for themselves in order to be paid through. So if you're hiring, you know, John Travolta to be your lead, you're not technically paying John Travolta, you're paying his corp, his loan out corp. You know, you'll, you'll pay him as such. Um, the, dif the, the difference between somebody being paid as a loan out versus a independent contractor and vendor is that you are still providing the worker's comp insurance. You're, you're our, or we are, if you're using media services. It's our coverage who's providing the coverage for them. So with these loan outs, you know, there is a huge benefit to production. You do not have to contribute to the employer taxes, the uh, federal fringes. So things like social security, Medicaid, state unemployment, you actually, those are not gonna be invoiced to you. It'll be gross wages, workers' compensation, and the handling fee. And if, they're, if they are part of a union or guild, there will be those pension and health and those additional charges as well. And if there's kit rentals and such, which typically doesn't apply, but those can be there as well. So with these corporations, there is a little bit more paperwork that's needed. We need to confirm that they are a legitimate corporation and that they are in good standing with their registered state. So a bit more paperwork, beneficial cost-wise, and oftentimes you'll come into this again with above-the-line positions. Okay. Next slide. 
minors. Okay, so if you're going to be hiring minors to uh, to be in front of the camera on one of your productions, understand that you need to know exactly what the rules are. Most states have a work permit requirement, and that means um, additional paperwork in terms of the Department of Labor. I'm in New York. In New York, you have to fill out an LS550 form that says, you know, you are, you know, asking to be eligible to employ uh, minors in the state. So you have a form saying who you're hiring, what the project is, and you have to file that with the Department of Labor in Albany, in New York State. There's a fee involved with it. You also have to show proof of workers' comp coverage, which is something that we do. Um, so that's New York. Coogan has a very, um, California has a very similar law called the Coogan Law. Again, you have to make sure that you have permission from the states in order to employ those uh, children. And you also have to establish a, a, a fund, a bank account, a trust fund that allows for 15% of the gross wages earned to be put into that account. This was done because of Jackie Coogan and uh, a child actor who was basically wiped clean by their parents. So definitely in New York and California something. Steve can give yeah, you a little more on that. Yeah, and, and those those funds are established by the uh, trust funds are established by the parents, and it's we withhold the money and deposit it in there. If they do not uh, create those, that fifteen percent has is is held. It cannot be paid out, um, and if they don't create it, it actually has to go to the state. So, um, but most of the people. Uh, will create the trust because obviously they want the money deposited. Mm -hmm. All right, um, film production incentives. If you're dealing with a project that's going for film tax incentives, um, we can give you guidance on that and we give you the reporting. You see a link at the bottom of the screen. And, and also one thing I'll mention is anybody who's interested at the end of this, we will be glad to provide a PDF of the presentation so you'll have reference to all the uh, links and all the information. Um, but the, we have a map on our website which will give you all the details of all the tax incentive programs. It's probably about 40 of them between all the different states. Um, and it's a competitive process. People want to give draw productions to their states. So there's many different tax incentive programs. Uh, and from the producer's perspectives, there's different factors. There's in deciding on which state to go to, creative needs, cost of productions, the various incentives. There's, it's, there's um, tax credits, which can be sold. So there's a lot of details, and honestly, we could, do a whole tax uh, tax incentive webinar just on that topic. So we'd we'll be glad to give you guidance on that. All right. All right. So we'll start uh, forms, Anthony. Yep. So start forms. So obviously you're paying folks. There's a lot of paperwork involved. So we're going to run through uh, a lot of the a lot of the standards here. So this here that you're looking at is a non-union start close form. This is unique to us. Um, most companies have a similar form where you basically outline the production, the employee, and the basics of their hire. Very similar to a deal memo, it kind of outlines the parameters of their of their uh, employment with you. Next slide. Time card. Okay, so this is an example of a non-union, non-exempt time card. So everybody who's going to be run through payroll, no matter what payroll company you're working with, we need a time card. Time card is needed to show proof of the employment. It is uh, it, it states the the work location, the rate of pay, the dates worked, the hours worked. It's signed off by both the employee and production. And we keep this for seven years. Should there ever be a audit by the Department of Labor, someone says they weren't paid for X amount of day, or they you know were supposed to receive X amount of dollars. We you bring this box out of wherever it is, or you know, we find a file and then we bring it up to the Department of Labor should there be an audit. So this is for compliance with labor law, Department of Labor law all over the states. Everybody who gets paid in the US knows these forms. 
They're all very similar throughout the payroll companies. So this is what you're going to have to be, you know, um, dealing with what the, the employees. You can complete it or they can complete it. You both have to sign off on it. It has to be correct in order for us to pay them. Next slide. All right, we should be seeing next the I-9 form. The I-9 form is a federal form. It's from the Department of Homeland Security. This form is needed to confirm that the employee is authorized to work in the United States. They will give their basic information. It's, it's completed both by production and, and the employee. The employee completes uh, most of page one, which we'll see hopefully in a second once the next once the slide moves over. And then production kind of confirms the rest. So when you're hiring someone, you, they, you need to see some proof of identification. U.S. passport is the best, as it is the one doc that can be used nice and easy. If they don't have a passport, there's a list of different documents that you can also that they can also provide you with. Typically the ones used are driver's license and a social security card. Um, the I-9 form is actually many pages long, but it's two, the first two pages are the ones that are important and they're the ones that we need in order to pay them. Um, you sign off and as well as the employee, very standard. Again, this is used to pay any employee in the United States, whether they be you know, a cafe barista or a director. Oh, there's our form, great, see a sample. Page one is on the left, page two is on the right. The employee fills out the majority of page one and then production kind of finishes it off, confirming the information on page two. All right, next slide is the W-9. The W-9 form is only needed from Loan Out Corps. The Loan Out Corp will have a employee identification number, which is issued to them by the government. So if we're gonna be paying out a loan out, we still need an I-9, W-4, and time card. In addition, we need a W-9. This will show us their business, employee, our taxpayer identification number, and their signature. Every, every loan out company and any company at all has this information. So this is a doc that they would have to provide, again, for loan outs only. Next slide. All right. Next, we have... Uh... There's something called the Ways Step Prevention Act form, which is just required in California and New York. That is similar to a, um, a deal memo or start form. It's just the, these two states have these requirements. And honestly, I think more states are going to continue to add. It's something that we don't require to be submitted to us, but it's something that's required by those states to have on file. So it's just you need to be aware of that. All right, as we said, New York and California have those, and I think Illinois is about to add that as well. All right, so we talked about a lot of paper. We have a lot of digital tools that can help in the payroll process, and they come along with the payroll service. Many of you might have heard of Showbiz Budgeting and Actualization. That is our budgeting tool and our cost tracking tool, and the payroll automatically uh, you can get a file that integrates with it and will cost out against your budget. So if anybody wants a demo of that, you can get it on our website. We also have production accounting software, um, which if you're doing a project with us, you're welcome to utilize. And it's full double entry accounting. You can cut checks, does cost reporting and so forth. Um, and then we also have Showbiz Time Cards that enables you, that's a desktop application, which helps you create um, time cards. And again, it, it just these are tools to make the process easier. We also have Showbiz Time Cards Mobile, which is a mobile tool, and that allows the crew to do the, enter the time um, and approvals go digitally. Um, and so these are just many of the tools. Now, you have to decide which is appropriate. It depends on the project. If you're paying one or two people, honestly, some of these things are not worth learning how to use. You could just stay with PDFs or paper. So we can guide you on what's the best tool for you. We also have self-service payroll reports on our website. You can generate reports. Um, from our portal. 
Uh, and our portal is a way to communicate with our payroll coordinators, um, and you can upload time cards and receive reports from us that way. And it's all secure. And, and that's important these days with, obviously we all hear about uh, people grabbing information from different websites. Uh, we also have employee onboarding. Anthony went through uh, many of the forms that are required. Now we have digital tools that will um, assist in this process. And again, if you're dealing with one or two people, you have to decide if it's worth learning how to use these. If you're working with us regularly, I, we recommend them highly. It will speed up your process and uh, gets rid of a lot of paper. And the onboarding tool is called Tim, and we can get you more information on that. Time is money is what Tim stands for, okay? All right, and this is the production dashboard where you can manage your crew and you set out, send out inv invitations. Um, and as Anthony mentioned, you have the I-9, um, W-4, uh, W-9, and all these fun paper, <laughs> uh, forms that are required, this converts them to a digital format and you can do, everybody can do all their approvals on the different portals. All right, these are just different screens from the TIM tool. And you see there's an approval pipeline. So you can see how far everybody has gotten um, in the process. All right, and this is from Tim for onboarding and keeps track of all the information, all the categories, all the deals and uh, everything that's been agreed to. And Showbiz Mobile Time Card is our mobile time card. The crews can enter their time on the web. Um, so obviously everything is moving towards digital, but we give you the option to do whatever you're comfortable with. We have some people who are totally anti-digital uh, and some mix and match. They might use just Tim um, for digital onboarding and stick with the PDFs for time cards. Um, and some use all of it, some use none of it. So it's really what you're comfortable with. And showbiz budgeting I mentioned earlier is our budgeting and actualization tool. And you can download a trial version of this off our website. And we also have a labor guide. And this is for union um, wages throughout the US. Um, but it's, it's a good guide as a rep, even if you're doing non-union, you can see what people uh, are expecting to be paid. And that's on our website as well. All right, and our last slide, Anthony. All right, so this is the big question. This is what you know the first question that usually uh, we get asked when when being approached by a you know foreign entity that's used to coming into film in the US for the first time. How much is it going to cost? It's an important question you need to know. So that's not an easy answer to question uh, question to answer. There's a lot of variables involved with uh, paying US folks as we spoke about. Um, taxes. So taxes on the federal level, Stay the same. It's 8.25. That includes Social Security, Medicaid, and federal unemployment. That is the same whether you're shooting in Florida, California, Missouri, whatever. The D and the OSAD, that's Social Security and Medicaid. Those top three, those are the federal ones. SUI is the state unemployment insurance percentage. Now that changes from state to state, and it can be low or it can be very high, and that will you know throw your overall costs you know into into limbo. So if you want an average, you know, for the United States, it'd be about a 22% markup on the gross wages, all right? So that's taking all the states into, you know, consideration. 22%, and that includes the federal, state, workers' compensation, and handling fee. But again, it really depends on where you're going to be filming. Filming in California is a lot less than filming in New York or in uh, Massachusetts or Arizona. Shooting in Florida is actually lower than shooting in California. In, in California. So what you need to do is give us a call. Give us a call and request the rate sheets for those states and we'll send it over to you. And we can explain to you exactly you know, what needs to be factored in. 
The best way to do this is using a budgeting program. Steve just went over Showbiz Budgeting. That's our product. Uh, it's a great tool. It's been around for a long time. It can do features, television, docs, still photography, the whole nine. There's also Movie Magic Budgeting. There's Gorilla. There's Celtics. There's a lot of different budgeting programs out there. Um, I definitely recommend you use one of them. All right. Handling fee is how we make our money. You know, that's that's that's, that's our bread and butter. So it's a percentage of the gross wages or a flat per check, depending on the um, uh, work classification. Different companies have different rates and different structures. So, you know, depending on who you're using, you have to contact them and get their rate information in order to properly budget. Again, you want to be precise with this. You know, it's it, you can say, I say 22 and that's a general number, but that can be way off or way over depending on where you're going. So the best thing to do is give Steve or I a call or shoot us an email, say I'm going to be filming in these states and we'll send you over a rate sheet and we'll walk you through exactly how to calculate it so you do it right. You're welcome to reach out by phone um, or email. Uh, both Anthony and myself are on the East Coast of the US, so you, you're welcome to reach out. We're not as far away as California as many time zones away so we're a little closer so we thank you for attending and uh, we will we do many different webinars you're welcome to look at our web our website at mediaservices.com and uh, you'll find a lot of educational webinars some are pre-recorded and we'll be doing many in the future that are live so thank you for coming and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. All right. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Appreciate you coming.